wanted to talk to you about the 2007 season. You know, Arthur has said before that that year was the most difficult of his professional life, which I found interesting because it was a tough ending to his time at Home Depot as well. Um, what do you think makes him say that? Because you were at the front lines of I everything I think he, um, he had developed a really personal relationship with Michael Vick. He, had, uh, he viewed Michael as more than just a player on our football team. Uh, he had, you know, th there was something special in that relationship. Um, he had come into the league and uh, all of a sudden, you know, two years into the league, he's winning a huge game in Green Bay. Michael's the quarterback. There definitely was a bond there. Uh, so I think that made it very impactful to him. Uh, I think also in, in that, um, in that, time, let's just call it July, August, September, October, November of that year, there was a lot going on, right? And there was so much negativity. Uh, so we're at Flowery Branch, which is where our football team is located, up at the front gate. There was red paint uh, that signified blood. There was people standing outside. There were, they were, they had red all over them. It was very, it was an ugly time and uh, it was very challenging. And I think for him personally, it was challenging. For us as an organization, it was challenging. And I thought he did a really good job in, uh, in pushing us to make sure that we stayed close to all of our associates, all the people in the building. We really started, we started to have almost weekly meetings um, every Monday, kind of update people of where we were, what we were doing, and made sure that they kind of understood, hey, this is gonna be okay. This just feels ugly right now. It's really ugly. This is going to be okay. I read somewhere that 2007 was the most difficult year of your professional career, and I thought that was interesting because it was a tough yeah. ending to Home Depot. Um, what was your reaction when you're on a flight coming back from an African safari right, right. and you get the news? Right, I got the news. I was well, I was shocked. I mean, I obviously didn't. Uh, by the time we came back from that safari, we had. Um, we had some information before we left that you know that that was you know something going on with dog fighting. We didn't know what it was, and Michael at that point said he wasn't involved, and it was his friends and it was his relatives, and you know he and we was you know he had done that with me, he had done that with the commissioner, um, so that was the first time I think that we actually came you know, face to face with the reality that, you know, he had done some, he personally had done some really bad things. Uh, and when news first came out and you, when news first came yeah. out and you addressed it with him, right. um, did you completely trust that that was indeed? Yeah, I did. I, I accepted, you know, with Michael, I met with him early on um, and he told me um, uh, that this was, you know, uh, friends uh, that were using an area in his home. He wasn't aware of it. He wasn't involved in it. It's not, you know, something he would ever approve of. He loved dogs, etc. And, you know, um, I accepted that. Um, but obviously then we had to do some digging and the NFL had to do some digging and collectively um, the facts started to come forward that indicated that was that was not the case. What do you remember from the first conversation you had with him after news came out of what actually happened? Uh, I, I tell you, I remember the last conversation before I went to prison as opposed to the first one. Uh, the last one, maybe he called me and I was in my bathroom getting ready and he said, you know, I, I want to tell you again, I'm really, you know, I'm really sorry for what you know, I've done, you know, to you personally, to Atlanta, to the fans, to my family and, and to obviously all these pets, um, dogs and pets, etc. So I asked him, I said, well, how did, you know, I mean, didn't you ever think you'd be caught? I mean, how, how did you think you were going to get away with this? And he said, well, and this is, you know, an important life lesson for people who are in positions of entitlement uh, or feel they're entitled in a variety of ways. Michael said, um, you know, my entire life, um, once I became the athlete I was, somebody was always there to take care of, quote, any issues that I had. Somebody always was there to kind of fend for me and, you know, cover up this for me and make it right or whatever it may be. And I thought this was going to be another case where that would happen again. Uh, that even to the very end that some attorney, I'm not, you know, being, you know, 
negative to attorneys, but you know, some attorney or whatever would, would, would handle it for me. And obviously I had to take responsibility for what I did, uh, and I do, and uh, I'm going to pay a big price, and he did. What do you remember from that stuck out most from the letters you got from him in jail? Well, I, 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 the impression I always had with Michael from the time from that conversation on is that he really did, uh, he did really want to repent. It was sincere. Uh, he felt um, he had made obviously very bad decisions, um, and part of it, you know, he, you know, it was initially it was just kind of his, you know, his rationalization. Or I remember another player. Um, happened to Depps be in the Hall of Fame in the NFL, Curtis Martin, who grew up in a tough area in Pittsburgh. Curtis came to Atlanta, had dinner with me one night. He said, one of the things you need to understand um, about, and he wasn't defending Michael, but just understand the environment. He said, well, he grew up, he said, I mean, they had bigger fish to fry than dog fighting. There were people who were attacking each other. There was domestic violence every night. There was, there was shootings going on. There were, I mean, all kinds of really bad things. He said, so, you know, Michael grew up in an environment where dogfighting, as bad as it is, wasn't considered to be the worst thing that law enforcement had to deal with. Um, and I think part of that, you know, um, set up Michael for failure, if you will, in that in that regard. Um, so it was a very difficult time for our franchise and difficult time for our fans. Um, you know, I felt badly for our family because of the relationship we had with Michael as an individual. Um, and um, I was happy when he finally got released and happy that he had another opportunity um, in the National Football League and he went to a good organization, the Philadelphia Eagles, and with a, one of the top coaches, a caring, um, caring coach, Andy Reid, who has dealt with own personal tragedies in his life and yet he was able to uh, reach out to Michael and, and, you know, and he had some good playing years there.